What's good, y'all? It's boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we got to talk about the promo segment between Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins tonight on Monday Night Raw. It was a very good promo segment, and definitely they're expounding on what's going on uh, for the main event of WrestleMania involving uh, The Rock, Roman, and Cody, and also Seth, and, and where things are heading uh, for this WrestleMania season. Um, we also were, you know, trying to see what did Cody uh, plan on saying in response to The Rock slapping the dog piss out of him. So I was definitely excited for this particular segment. I didn't know Seth was going to come out there. thought Drew was, but I'm glad that he did. And we're going to get into basically what was said and, and where things could go in the future. I also have to talk about the live stream shout out to everyone that was a part of the monday night raw live stream on youtube and twitch uh you guys are amazing we always enjoy having you guys watch the show with us it makes the show that much better so we appreciate everyone that's a part of the live stream that was part of the live stream but we gotta get into this we're gonna get right into this cody seth rollins promo segment so cody comes out there and it seems like every city he goes to as of late, the crowd reaction, the pop that he gets is just massive. Tonight's crowd, they definitely showed out for Cody. They were definitely happy to see him. Crowd was electric when he got inside the ring. And it's cool to see that this whole situation that transpired a few weeks ago with The Rock potentially taking his spot at WrestleMania made him now a bigger star than he ever was in WWE. This is the loudest that the reactions he get everywhere he goes since he's been back. It's just, it's fantastic. And I love to see that, that they are really pushing this guy now to the moon, it seems like. And I love it. So, comes out there to a great reaction. And he, he he's basically talking to the crowd and, and, and trying to let them know, you know, he appreciates them sticking behind him he appreciates them you know kind of pushing him forward to make the right decision and and to choose roman reigns and uh even the rock was brought up because he wanted to address the rock uh putting hands on him and you heard a loud rocky suck chant and it's crazy to say in 2024 hearing a very loud rocky chucks uh rocky sucks chant it's it's definitely definitely crazy to think about um cody mentioned that you know he's starting to get a little bit emotional about all this love and support he's receiving from the fans but he doesn't want to be labeled as a cody crybaby and then he proceeds to show the clip of of pretty much um rock on the pat mcafee show just going in on the cody crybabies or whatnot talking his trash and he said a line, you know, over there eating your chicken McNuggets, stick it up, stick it straight up your candy ass, or whatever. So he cuts back from that segment. Crowds booing the pack, uh, Pat McAfee segment uh, with the rock on it. Crowds booing and uh, booing just that whole segment. And he's asking, <laughs> he's asking Pat McAfee, where am I supposed to stick the McNuggets at? Where am I supposed to stick them at? He was asking Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee was like, up up your ass. <laughs> it, was, it was funny. I love Pat McAfee's interaction on commentary as well. Glad to have him back. And essentially what he's alluding to is The Rock has always been this guy that had this, this ability to just destroy people on the microphone. Like his, his microphone skills have been bar none, but everybody else for a long time. But he felt like there was low hanging fruit. He essentially, Cody was like, you know, it's not too many people that can hang with the great one. But to be honest with you, that that's it. That's the best you got. I don't, I don't know about that. And honestly, I was waiting for him to get to the point where what is he going to, how is he going to address what happened with, uh, with uh, him and uh, Roman at the press conference. And he finally got to that part. He said, I wasn't trying to disrespect your family, but you knew that. You knew that. You 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 took that upon yourself to take the opportunity to slap me across the face when 
the disrespect wasn't to you know i wasn't trying to in purposely intend to disrespect your family considering your cousin disrespected my father and has done it before so you just took that as an opportunity to you know slap me and he made it very clear he says all right since we're doing this next time i sleep see you i'm gonna put hands on you i'm I, i'm gonna have to put hands on you next time i see you i wish he came off a little bit more aggressive i wish he would have been able to say next time i see you i'm gonna kick your ass <laughs> you know what i'm saying but obviously they want cody to have this diplomatic you know they want him to be the top baby face so he's not gonna say some stuff too too much on the vulgar side but i i want them to really kind of tap into that a little bit more like cm punk said on commentary at the kickoff show he needs to tap into that a little bit more when he came out there to the no music and t told everyone that this is some bullshit that's what we need there's nothing wrong with a good face of the company baby face but make him real make him have emotions and that's what we need more of so i, I do like he said i like the fact that he addressed he said well, next time i see you I'm going to put hands on you. I'm going to hit back. So hopefully that does happen. Maybe that happens at this uh, SmackDown episode. We'll see. So before he was to finish up, Seth Rollins comes out there. Gets a huge ovation. Crowds loving him and whatnot. And before Seth got into it, he told Cody, hey, before we get into this, before you say what you're going to say, I just want to say thank you for having my back out there. I know we haven't seen eye to eye, but I really do appreciate that. And Seth Rollins says, no problem. You're welcome. And then this was a very interesting promo from Seth, which I really do appreciate. He basically said, look, I am disappointed that you didn't choose me to fight for the World Heavyweight Championship. But seeing what you was dealing with out there at the press conference, seeing the passion, I understood. I, I, under, I understood. I understand why you didn't choose me. And I get it. You need to finish your story for yourself and for your family, for your father. I get it. I completely understand. But then he also said this. But if you're going to do that, you need to. You must finish your story. Because if you don't finish your story this time, the WWE landscape will be changed forever and, and not in a good way. It's going to be some dark times after that WrestleMania if you don't finish the story. Because now it means we're not going to see Roman defending that championship more than we have been now. In fact, it's going to be less and less that we see that championship. You need to stop him. You need to take care of business. You need to finish the story because you have the best possible chance to do it. He even mentioned The Rock, got some more Rocky chants, and he 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 put it into perspective. And I like how he mentioned The Rock, but he also put it into perspective of what happened last year to what he's facing this year. He said, you know, you got The Rock and Roman. They think they can do whatever they want. They think they can push their weight and their power and influence wherever they want. That glass ceiling gets a little bit thicker if Roman Reigns retains. That brass ring, it, it gets a little bit higher. It's higher. It's harder to obtain if Roman Reigns obtains. And now that he has the Rock on his side, you're 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 facing some some crazy odds. He said, "What is your game plan? What is your game plan?" Because last year the Dak was stuck. Uh, I said the deck. The deck was stick, uh, stacked against you. And that was last year. And you almost got it done, but it was just the numbers game. This year, it's even harder. Last year, you had to deal with Jay. You had to deal with Jimmy. You had to deal with uh, Solo. You had to deal with Paul Heyman. This year, you have to deal with Jimmy, Solo, and now The Rock. You're going to need help. And I like where he broke down the promo even further after giving this rousing speech and telling him you're going to need help. It's going to be hard for you to do this by yourself. In and in basically, that's what he kind of worried. He's like, it's going to be hard for you to do this by yourself. 
and he he took blame. He said, "You know what? When me and Roman was in the Shield, we was we were tearing things up, but I have to take blame for this. This is partially my fault because I've mo I've turned them into this. You know, he, he betrayed Roman. He betrayed him, and we all know it's heavily documented. But I like that they're turning this." They're turning him getting betrayed potentially to a situation where this is the Roman we've gotten. Obviously, we didn't see it for a while, but this is the Roman that we finally gotten because of that betrayal. And he's like, I caused this. I didn't know it was going to be that bad. I didn't know what monster he was going to become and, until now. So he he basically let it be known, look, if you need my help, if you want my help, you let me know and I will definitely help you out if you need it. And I have no problem being a shield for you. And I like that. That was nice wording. They talked about the shield and he said, I don't have a problem being a shield for you if you need it. So it's going to be very interesting. That was a very good promo segment. Once again, when Seth Rollins is serious, He's the best version of himself. I really, I know they do the, the little gimmick and the dance and then the outlandish outfits because the crowd loves it. The, you know, the people that are actually at the arenas love it. But at the same time, man, when he's serious, he cuts the best promos and you buy into it. And he was passionate about what he was saying. He was passionate telling him, you got to finish the story. You got to do this. If you don't, WWE's doomed. You need to save WWE. You need to take that championship away from Roman and save the WWE or we're doomed. And I love that. Love that. That was so, so, so good. And the passion and the fire and Cody just soaking it all in and ending it with, I can be your shield if you need me to. Appreciate that, man. And honestly, I don't know. It looked like they're maybe setting up some type of tag situation, but I do think it's more or less going to be Seth is going to be in his corner. Seth is going to be there to help even up the odds because he can't do it by himself. The question is, will it be somebody else that has his back as well? That's going to be the interesting question. I don't think they're doing tag a tag match. I don't think there needs to be a tag match with the Rock and Roman. If they do it, It'll probably have to be night one, but I don't think they need to do that. I think having The Rock in Roman's corner is going to be crucial. It's going to be very important. Having Seth back up, back up uh, Cody, depending on if he's going to be the champion or not, unless, unless there's a situation where the bloodline cost Seth the championship, and then that way he helps Cody. That's the only thing I can think of. That's really the only thing I can think of because I just don't see Seth winning at this year's Royal Rumble. It has to be someone, maybe the bloodline interferes because they see that he's trying to help him. So they'll do whatever they can to maybe um, maybe take out Seth or, or in a situation kind of screw over Seth. You know, trying to push their weight. So that could be a situation they do um, for Seth uh, Rollins' World Heavyweight Championship match, depending on who's going to win that Elimination Chamber. You know, they could be the reason why Seth loses because Seth is trying to help Cody. So that can be a situation. Who knows? Once again, we still don't have no clear idea how WrestleMania is going to play out. But I love this segment because I love the fact that Seth Rollins is – the I guess you can say the voice for the 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 majority of the fans that want Cody to finish the story and they know he needs to do it because if he doesn't this time WWE is it's gonna be some dark days for WWE and the championship will be held hostage and it's gonna be one of those things where the bloodline wins the the Samoan family is dominating WWE and Nobody wants that, <laughs> per storyline-wise. You know, you want diversity. So I love what they're doing here. Very excited. If you haven't gone seen that promo segment, go check it out. Seth Rollins has been on a roll with his promos 
for the past month plus it's been great and go check this out very good stuff from seth and cody tonight but comment down below let me know do you guys think this will spur up some type of tag team match at wrestlemania with cody and uh seth rollins versus the rock and roman reigns or do you guys think it'll more or less be a situation where maybe bloodline interferes in seth rollins world heavyweight championship match causes seth to lose the title and maybe cody and maybe seth will have cody's back in the main event let me know what where y'all think this is gonna go because i'm loving the just the the uncertainty of how things are going to play out at this year's WrestleMania. That's how it should be. But I appreciate all the love and support. Pro 250K and I'm still going to be the YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.